What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Verzi Effect podcast show. My name is Paul Verzi, and you guys are listening to episode 512. Uh, I don't know many how many that makes uh, since we've been going on Zoom here during the pandemic, but how the hell is everybody doing? I hope everybody's doing well in between shows. I hope you and your family and everybody that you love are doing good. Um, I am uh, flying solo, but I have a couple of cool guests on coming, uh, coming soon. So, um, but everybody wanted me to ask, um, or I should say everybody wanted me to answer the homeless, uh, thing that I tweeted. Everybody said, what's going on with this homeless thing, Paul? We got to, I want to hear it. Which podcast is it going to be on? Is it going to be on your podcast? Yes. It's going to be on this podcast. I will do it on this show. Um, if you were listening to my Instagram live last night, you already know, but I will share it with, uh, with you guys now on the show. Before I begin 512 of the Verzi Effect, I want to thank everybody who's listening to the Verzi Effect. I want to thank everybody, all the new listeners. I've been finding out people are reaching out saying that they just discovered the Verzi Effect. They love the show. They love listening to it, which lets me know that person is smart. I appreciate you. Tell a friend. Thank everybody um, who is new to the show. Of course, thank all the OGs who've been listening to TVE from the beginning. Um, the show constantly growing. So I thank you. You can get and listen to the TVE everywhere you get your podcast, iTunes, Spotify, please leave comments, reviews. Uh, it helps the show move up and I really appreciate it. So thank you very much. And shout out to my producer, the great, you guys know him, the Greek freak, Andrew Themlis, uh, out there in his beautiful compound in Beverly Hills, California. Don't let him fool you. He's doing uh, a lot better than he shows. Uh, but let's get into this shit guys. All right, let's get into this. This might be, <clears throat> okay. This might be the number one unacceptable in the history of TVE in the history of this podcast. Okay. Now you guys know I developed the unacceptable segment a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, I said, we're going to call out people for their unacceptable shit. Uh, and then you guys started tweeting me yours. For you newcomers who don't really know much about the unacceptable, I will explain. Okay, let me make sure I got to put my hands up here. There we go. Um, I will explain that. Let me put the lights down a little bit. I don't know what's going on here. Anyway, so the unacceptable segment was, see, this is why I need Andrew on the thing to get everything right. Okay. Feel goes good. The unacceptable segment was something I saw that week that was just that, unacceptable. It was something that was crazy, disgusting, just unacceptable. Somebody in a restaurant that's a five-star restaurant in flip-flops. Somebody putting their feet up on the fucking airplane window. Just something ridiculous, okay? I would call those out. Then the great fans of the Verzi effect would start tweeting me. I would read the funniest ones. And that's how, that's how this came about. Now, I don't always do the unacceptable because there's other things to talk about. Uh, we're on Zoom now, so... You know, I'm just where we're, we revamped the show a little bit, um, but sometimes you got to bring something back. All right. And here is the most unacceptable of unacceptables um, that I mean, listen, there are some that can't be topped. You guys know some of the crazy stories, a woman just giving an Uber driver a baby and an address and leaving and the fucking uber driver had to drive the baby 45 minutes i mean there's a couple of doozies for sure but this one is brutal i will share it with you now this started by me tweeting something um 
which uh, the tweet said, fuck the homeless, I'll explain. Now, we've all dealt with homeless people. Some cities are worse than others. We feel bad for people that don't have a place to sleep. They don't have food to eat. They don't have proper clothes on their backs. Yes, we understand all of that. Okay, nobody's a piece of shit here. Here's why I tweeted what I tweeted. I was at the stand comedy club and restaurant support them New York City, 16th Street, the new stand I was there last Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Okay, I shot the special, but got to get some material when the special comes out, I'm going to go on tour. So I got to work and get some new jokes and do all that shit. So I go there. And as comedians go into comedy clubs, you see your friends and your peers as you do when you, sh you show up to uh, the workplace, right? So I run into Josh Adam Myers. For you people uh, that might know Josh, Josh was, um, Josh started the Comedy Jam. Josh has been doing the Comedy Jam for what? Almost 10 years. It was a show on Comedy Central. It's where comedians come up, the best comedians in the country. They tell a few stories about a song or a story about a song. They do like seven, eight minutes of stand-up material about that song or how it came about, or they just do seven, eight minutes of stand-up and they talk about a song and then they actually have a rock band do the song. So it's like karaoke on steroids and, um, and Josh is a great stand-up as well, right? So I see Josh at the, at the stand. And I'm about to go on stage. I get off stage. I see him. And I notice that something's wrong with him. I noticed that my friend needed to talk. Okay. So we start talking. I want to go home, but I noticed it. So I go, hey, man, let's go outside on the patio. They have like those patios outside where, you know, like with COVID, they built those wooden, you know, almost like, the, you know, the thing that, that hang over the sidewalk and they put tables and chairs and you could sit outside and you could eat. You drink, do the whole deal. So a lot of times comedians in between shows, they smoke cigars, they do all that shit, right? So I'm sitting outside and I start having a real deep conversation with one of my peers, one of my friends, Josh. And we're talking about stuff and we're, we're having a, a decent talk. And as we're talking and it starts to get really, you know, it's one of those really good talks. It was a good fucking talk. It was a talk where you don't want to be interrupted. It was a talk where it's flowing. It's good. And of course, this fucking homeless guy comes looking. They always like look and fucking, you know, go down and shit. Fine. Whatever. I'm only mad now. I'm mad after the fact. That's why. Okay. So this fucking guy comes up and, you know, he, he's like, hey, guys, I just want to be any interrupt. I'm sorry to interrupt. So I like that he said, sorry to interrupt, because he could probably tell, you know, anybody could be brain dead and see that you interrupted a good, deep conversation. Hey, man, I mean to interrupt, but I just want to let you guys know, man, I've been in the same shirt for three weeks. He had like this light sweatshirt on. I've been in this for like three weeks, man. And I'm just being honest. I need something. Is there anything? And Josh just goes, man, we don't have anything on us. I don't have anything on. And, and like, you know, Josh was just like, hey, man, I, you know, I don't have anything on you. You know, have a good night. Now, me, I don't know, whatever it was, I was in a mood. And I go, hold on a second. Let me see what I got. And I get up to stand up. Now, as I stand up, I know, okay, I know as I get up, and stand up to put my hands in my pockets that I have bills in all my pockets. So I have, I know that there was one where I had two singles. I think there was a couple of big bills. So I'm like, let me see what I got. So I stand up and I put my hand in my left pocket and I'm hoping that I take the two singles out and just hand this guy two bucks and have him go on with his day, you know, get the fuck out of here. And I stand up and I pull out a 20. And now I'm looking at the 20. He sees the 20, of course. Josh sees the 20. And now I'm not built to put that 20 back in my pocket and then take out two ones and give them that. I'm not going to do that and just make the guy feel even worse. Be like, listen, you're not worthy of this. 
honestly, it was something I didn't want to do. So I took out the 20. I'm like, you know what, Paul, you took out a 20, hand him the 20. So I said, sir, there's a 20. Okay. Go do whatever. Uh, take a 20. Now, you know, and I sit back down. I sit back down thinking this guy's going to be appreciative. And I swear to God, this piece of shit goes, oh man, I appreciate it. But this this kind of isn't enough for what I need to, what? Not enough. And I just sat down and I sternly go, that's all I got, man. That's it. And then he walked off and he's just like, sorry, just being honest. What a piece of shit. So that's why I said, fuck the homeless. Okay. That's why I said that because that shit has happened. I've been, to, I've been in, in, in Cleveland. A guy was like, yo, can I get money for a movie? You know, it's like, these guys are getting specific now. These guys are getting, I handed this fucking bum $20. He should have started crying. He should have went to fucking CVS or Walgreens and got himself new socks, new drawers, and another sweatshirt. And he still would have had probably fucking $8.38 left over. This piece of shit. Okay? Throw on some new socks. Throw on some new drawers. You've been in the same shirt. You could go CVS. That's like fucking Gucci. That's like fucking, to, to a homeless person, a fresh pair of Hanes fucking socks and underwear and maybe a sweatshirt, whatever. You know, and if I gave them $20, I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. <coughs> if I gave him shit. Hey, sorry. If I gave him $20 at midnight, okay? If I gave this guy $20 at midnight, he probably made over 100 for the day. And even if he only made 25 for the day, now I just put him to 45. Go get some socks, underwear, some clean fucking shirts and be happy. Go into a bar and buy a fucking soda for $3 and sit at the bar and look at the TV as a, as a patron of the bar and get yourself a drink and enjoy the, the victory of the 20. No, this isn't enough for what I need. Unacceptable. Ridiculous is what it is. It's ridiculous. So that's why I tweeted, fuck the homeless. All right. Because these people are not... I know somebody that gave a homeless guy a sandwich and the homeless guy took the sandwich and threw it at their back and said, I need money, not a sandwich. All right. These people, some of them, yes. Some of these people are great people who just are down on their luck and they need a place to stay and they need to get on their feet. And they're really, really appreciative when you give them something and you give them a dollar, they'll start crying and all that stuff. And, but then some of these people, have figured out a way to walk around cities all day, make their money. They found a guy who was scamming people. I think they said the guy was making four to $500 every couple hours in the city, figured out a way to do it. Some of these people are pieces of shit. Okay. Something tells me that that guy wasn't in that shirt for three weeks. Okay. Something tells me when I gave that guy a 20 and he said, this isn't enough, you know, I, it, it was really one of the grossest things. The funniest part about that is me and Josh start talking. And um, while me and Josh are, me and Josh are talking and everything uh, after the guy left, it's over. The guy left. We're talking, we're having a good conversation again. And then while we're talking, I just looked and I go, I can't believe I just gave that guy a 20 and he said it wasn't enough. And Josh just started laughing. Josh is like, dude, I, I witnessed that. I can't even believe. Like, could you imagine being homeless and somebody at night just throwing you a 20? I mean, that's like a victory. And I'm not saying that to make me sound like a nice guy. All right. I wasn't going to, I didn't want to give him a 20. I wanted to give him the two singles that were in my pocket, but a 20 came out and I can't be like, oh, but you know, what am I going to say? Oh man, I need this sitting there like drinking. I got fucking Jordans on gold chains. I need this. Like, I just felt like, all right, I'm going to give this guy 20. This guy's going to walk off happy. No, it's not enough for what I need. Piece of shit. I hope I see him again.
Because if I see him again, I'll be like, yo, man, I gave you a 20 and you said it wasn't enough. Don't ever come and ask me for money or anybody. You shouldn't even be allowed to, to come out here and try to do this shit outside this comedy club anymore. I gave you a 20 and you said that. Get the fuck on, man. Go to somebody. Go, go, go fuck somebody over in front of a pizzeria down the street. Not me anymore. Fuck that guy. All right. Now, I was going to be mean and say, I'm glad the cold weather's coming. I'm not going to go there. But I got angry. Let's talk about John Gruden. Let's talk about John Gruden a little bit here. All right. I'm sorry. There's, there's, these fucking cups get soaking wet. And then I don't have a coaster in here. So I don't, I don't know what to do. There we go. I just put it in something. I'll use my sweatshirt. I'm sorry, guys. I'm coming a little hot. Coming a little hot on uh, 512. Fucking homeless guy really pissed me off. I'm sorry, man, but this isn't enough. I'm like, what? Dude, Josh just sat back. I was like, get the fuck out of here. John Gruden, I hate to say this, but John Gruden's a fucking dummy. Okay. If first of all, for multiple, first of all, if this is who this guy is, eight years of, of emails, eight years, John, eight years of saying dumb shit. All right. I don't even text jokes in a group text because I know it's going to live out there. A joke, even if I was joking about something. OK, even if I was joking about so you could joke about anything. You could be like, I was going for a walk. This dog almost bit me. I wanted to kick this thing in the head. Right. All of a sudden you're joking with your friend. You're not friends with that person anymore. Oh, look, man, they like to beat animals. Shit like that happens. OK, they don't know. No, the dog almost killed me. I was on a walk like I really had to kick the dog. No, no, you're just trying to look like this guy is talking about. race sexuality, all these things in, in black and white texts and emails for a corporation while he's working for somebody. If you're that fucking stupid to do shit like that and that's who you are, what can you do? Now, listen, I think if one email comes out and you try to be funny and you say a joke and the joke doesn't land and the joke just comes across as stupid and there's like one incident, okay, that's one thing. But if a dude is going to keep doing that shit for eight, nine years, at what point is it like, oh, that's who this guy is? That's who this guy is. If you're that fucking stupid or that's who you are, you deserve what comes to you, period. You deserve what comes to you. That's it. You know, I, I don't it, it's you can't really defend eight years of saying shit in, in emails. At what point are you like, oh, this guy is just fucking that's who this guy is. That's who this guy is. It's not just a silly joke. All right. And you guys know me. If you listen to the show, <clears throat> I am so against cancel culture. If you've ever listened to the Verzi effect and you know who I am and you've listened to my comedy, I'm so against cancel culture. I'm so against targeting people and going after people. But if you're a piece of shit and you're stupid like that, then and it's years and years, then enough's enough. All right. There's certain shit. It's like, I'm, I'm not going to defend something just to defend it. I don't want to see anybody lose their job. I don't want to see anybody fucking get disgraced. I don't want to see anybody's family be put through anything like that. I don't want to, I don't want to see that. But if you're, a, if you're a moron and you're putting shit on emails that live forever out there and you think no one's going to see it and you're saying hateful shit for that long, that's kind of who you are. Fuck it. You can't be helped. People like that, if they're in the mob, they end up in a trunk. They can't be fucking helped. It's, it's like how many times? So that's that's what I think. People are asking, what do I think about the Gruden thing? What, I, what am I supposed to think about the Gruden thing? What am I supposed to think? Now, I will say, I will say this. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking them out of the ring of honor. Um, you know, for the coaching that he did winning them a Super Bowl, that seems a little somebody made a good point. I heard a radio station say, Well, wait a minute, OJ Simpson is in the Bills Ring of Honor. 
Now, granted, I know that he was found, but, you know, but civilly in the civil suit, he was found that he did, you know, he was found guilty. He also has other criminal things where he was like going into hotel rooms, doing shit, not to mention this. And they kept him in there. John Gruden saying emails. I'm not saying what he did was right, but taking him out of the ring of honor, um, you know, <clears throat> for emails he did as an analyst and stuff like that, which have nothing to do with when he was coaching a team to a Super Bowl victory. That seems a little much to me, but whatever. But I'm just being honest. That seems a little much to me. Um, now let's move on to the Dave Chappelle special. You guys were asking me to talk about shit. This is the Verzi effect, 512. I'll talk about this shit too. Okay. All of these people that are criticizing Dave Chappelle saying he stabbed people in the back and, and this and that. Um, I did something which is listening to the joke and listening to what he was saying. And I feel as though he was just joking around. I felt as though he was trying to make points as he was joking. I felt it was a different style for him, but I felt like it was, it was, was funny and I listened to it and I took it as a comedy show. And that's just how I take it. Maybe I'm biased cause I'm in comedy, but like, I thought that he was really funny and, and I thought that he made some points and look, comedy is not going to land for everybody, but it's comedy. It's jokes. It's somebody's up there's a opinion. And, you know, I said things on stage and given my opinion and, and, and some people get upset, but these are jokes and, and it's a comedy show and not everything is going to land the way you want it to land. So you could leave and go, Hey, I like this. I didn't like that, but everybody's going crazy, man. And, 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 you know, I I've always been different with comedy when it's a comedy show. I really, I really just, I look at it as, as comedy and it entertained me and uh, I, I didn't plan to watch it really. Cause I don't like watching comedy as a comedian. Um, but I was laying in bed. It was late. I had my phone and I started it. And I'm like, let me watch the first five minutes. And I ended up watching the whole thing. And, uh, you know, I enjoyed it. It was different, but I enjoyed it. I was listening to what somebody said. I was listening to what a master of the art form was doing. And uh, I enjoyed it. And I, you know, there were times I bursted out laughing. There were times where I just listened interestedly, you know, it entertained me. And I think that that's the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to be entertained. You know, there are, there have been comedians that say things that I don't agree with, but it's comedy. It's, it's just comedy, you know? So uh, yeah, I, I, you know, of course there's, listen, man, there's always going to be outrage when you touch on certain things today, man. You know, um, we're just in a really weird time right now. Okay. Uh, I'm all for progression and I'm all for, you know what I'm all for? I'm all for, you know, When's national shut the fuck up and mind your own business day? Cause that's what I'm for. I'm for live and let live shut up and mind your own business. Now I don't like being bullied. I don't like people bullying me into things. And I do think it goes too far. And I think it's a little much, you know, certain things, uh, you know, I just heard something and I, I didn't know if this was a joke or not, but I heard that Demi Lovato said calling extraterrestrials aliens is like a, a derogatory statement towards aliens. I mean, first of all, I don't, I don't know any aliens. I, I've never seen an alien. And uh, as far as I know, in the history of the United States, nobody has met or talked to an extraterrestrial. Uh, apparently Demi Lovato, Demi Lovato said that she knows them or something like that. I don't know, but um the word alien is just a name and that's derogatory towards something we don't even know exists. I mean, what the fuck is happening right now? I, I don't understand. Like, d d I mean, am I nuts? Like, like what, what, what should they be called? Like, I don't understand. It's, it's just, it. and then if, and then if you say something, you're like the, you know, this is what I don't like about it. If you say something like that seems crazy, like, what do you mean? Like, that's a derogatory thing about aliens. We don't even like that sounds good. Then like, you're the insensitive one. And it's like, no, that doesn't exist. That doesn't exist. What are we talking about here? We call calling it unidentified flying object is derogatory towards spaceships. 
because we should. It's like, what the fuck is happening? When does it just get so much that like you, you don't even know what to do? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it just seems to me that, uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I don't even know, like, I truly don't know what to say anymore. <laughs> I said, like, masseuse about people that give massages. And someone was like, you know, that's really kind of inappropriate. And I'm like, what do you mean? Well, it's not really called a masseuse anymore. A masseuse means like sexual. I'm going like, what? I've paid money. Money comes out of my checking account every month for me to go to a certain place and get a massage. Okay. I have back issues. I have neck issues, muscle tension in my back. I travel a lot. So I'm in cars, airplanes. I sit a lot. So I go and I get a massage. And if you have it uh, come out of your checking account monthly, it's less expensive than just going there. And the amount of times I do it, it made sense. I do that. I thought it was a masseuse. Uh, and they were like, no, you can't say masseuse. So what other words do I not? What What other things can't you say? Like, I just don't. I mean, it, we are, I mean, we, an alien was a fucking a book, like, the, like, a, like books, movies. Oh, there's aliens. Now it's derogatory. It's going to hurt their fucking feelings. And by the way, if aliens look like they did in the movie with Sigourney Weaver, I don't think they have feelings. They're fucking slimy with teeth and they want to kill everybody. I don't think they're going to fucking be sobbing in a corner because you call them a fucking alien. I mean, what are we, what's, what's going on here? What the fuck are we talking about? What are we talking about? You can't call them aliens because the aliens are going to, they're going to go back in their space shuttle and go millions and billions and billions and billions of, uh, of miles away to their other galaxy. And they're going to be sad when they go and eat at night, thinking that that little planet earth called them aliens. I mean, what? the fuck i mean are we on a we're on another planet i don't even know what i feel like we're on another planet unbelievable man un truly unbelievable i don't even know what to say anymore i'm just when people ask me sometimes they'll be like hey what do you think about this i'll be like are oh, you just let me know it's like i'm just gonna use the simple words like the and of and happy and sad and good job good luck I don't know what to say uh, yes yeah, my taxi driver you know taxi driver is a really you know it just makes them feel you should say like you know transportation engineer it's i mean guys what are we doing what are we talking about? I literally read something that said Demi Lovato says aliens is derogatory towards, and that was on. And here's the other thing. Shame on CNN for putting that out there. Is CNN serious? Like they put that in a headline on their social media. Can, can any of these media outlet, can anything get laughed off? Can it, can anything just get like, normally laughed off or you know at least at least the ceo of netflix said that he's going to back dave chappelle and they put a master on there and they 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 you know stand by his stand up and anybody who you know insubordination against it especially with with employees of netflix is not going to be tolerated and stuff like that at least like that person saw a product said we're putting it out on our thing and we're going to stand behind it, you know? But, you know, this other nonsense that's out there, man, this is a craziness going on. And it really is like, I'm not trying to be, like, like I said, the shit that John Gruden did for eight years is wrong. Fuck him, he's too stupid. That's the person he is. Get him out, that's fine. 
But this other shit, I mean, and here's the crazy thing. Here's the crazy thing. I bet you there was a big percentage of people that saw that aliens thing and was like, yeah, you know, you're right. You're right. I feel so horrible that I've said alien all these years, even though it's names of books and movies and documentaries. And that's what we've called them since we're children. Now they're space strangers. Now they're space strangers. We might not know them and they might be a stranger, but they're just beings in space. So we're not going to call them aliens. I mean, we are, it, this is wild. Let's go on to some positive stuff. Let's go on to some positive stuff. I know we're hitting on, we're hitting on a lot of buttons here and it's, you know what, I'll be honest with you. My, my angst and my attitude is basically because of that homeless man. That homeless man who, when I see him, if I see him in the streets in front of the comic club, I'll be like, yo, man, can I get my 20 back? Or you got 20, I need to go get something. You know, remember you said you were in the same shirt for three weeks? Yeah, well, I've been upset that I was robbed for the last three weeks. So can I get my 20 back? Sorry, I'm just being honest. Just being honest. Piece of shit. Fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. Um... But let's let's move on to something. Uh, let's move on to something uh, positive. OK, uh, we'll, we'll I don't know how to shift from all that. We talked about some heavy shit, homeless and Chappelle's thing and John Gruden. And, you know, we can't call aliens aliens anymore. So we've uh, TVE uh, 512 has been kind of all over the all over the map here. But let's let's kind of move to uh, to some to some positive things guys like um you know i'm going going back to texas houston you got a problem speaking of houston you got a problem um jeff bezos and william shatner shot up into space and uh i don't know if i would do that man next time i have a guest on tve we're going to talk about if you would do that i don't know if i would do that just because it's been so few flights, right? It's just like two or three times of the same rocket. I get that, but all right, you go up, you leave the atmosphere. It goes, you know, black and you're in space. That's what William Shatner kept talking about. He kept going, it was blue. Everything was blue. And then it was just black. And it's like, is that death? And he started saying some shit. And I guess he's 90 years old. He looks fan fantastic for 90, he really does. But um, yeah, I'm good with like, until going to space becomes like taking an Uber to the mall until it's like that. I don't think I'm fucking with it. You know, I don't, I don't d just the, the fear of being so few people to do it. And like, if anything fucked up and, you know, I don't know how the, the, the metal and the heat and the atmosphere, I don't know if somebody fucks up. I mean, listen, I mean, they've, they've, you know, there's been shit with regular aircraft, I mean, and, and, and all kinds of shit, you know, so they haven't perfected trains yet and they stay down. So um, I don't think I would fuck with going into space. Plus, I mean, I'm claustrophobic. I don't think I mean, I can't even do an MRI for 30 minutes, knowing that the people are right there and could take me out. I don't know if I'm sitting in a little fucking tube and then I leave Earth and I'm sitting there with five other assholes in a circle just looking out a little window, knowing that if God forbid something happened, I'm going to fucking die in a little capsule with these assholes. I can't, I'm not doing that. Fuck that. I'm not doing it. I'll, I'll be on the beach pointing up, look, it's coming down, you know, with a boogie board in my hand and a fucking strawberry daiquiri in the other watching that shit come down. I'm not, I'm not going to be up there. I'm, I'm, I'm not para. I don't want to parasail because I'm afraid if the thing snaps, I'm going to fucking drift off into shark infested waters and I'm going to be the asshole tangled under the, 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 the fucking, what's the thing called the, the, the shoot, the parachute or whatever over me while, you know, a school of great whites just feed on my legs, not going to happen. So I'm not going into space. God forbid something drifts off and you're just floating in space. I, I mean, that, what a nightmare would that be? You're just drifting in, in, in blackness. Fuck that, dude. 
Um, and I know people are saying, no, they know what they're doing. They, they know it comes down. It's gravity. I'm not fucking with it. Just not doing it. Just not doing it. Um, but I'm going to be in Texas. I'm going to be in Houston, Texas, guys. I'm excited about it. Going to Houston, Texas uh, tomorrow through Saturday. I will be at the Improv. Go out there. Get your tickets at the HoustonImprov.com. I'm bringing the new hour. Uh, can't wait to get back to Texas. And then, guys, the last show I have on the books for the year. I, more is coming, by the way, because once the special comes, I'm going to be going on another tour. A lot more is coming. But the last big one of the year, October 22nd, I'm going to the Wilbur Theater, Boston, Massachusetts, I cannot wait. It's my first time headlining the theater. I've been there many times as an opener. Last time I was there, I was with Sal Vacano from Impractical Jokers. Had a great time. And uh, then my date got postponed two times because of COVID-19. And now, finally, uh, a little over a week away, I will be at the Wilbur in Boston. Get your tickets. I'm coming in hot. I'm not coming in there doing some long set. Oh, he was okay. Fuck, I'm coming in there, and I'm going to have a good time in Boston. I'm going to do the hour, and uh, it's been going great. Everybody all over the place has been talking about how they love the hour. So come out. Uh, it will be worth it. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to get some New England clam chowder. I'm going to go to the Union Oyster House. I'll be sucking down oysters. I'll be drinking Sam Adams. that Saturday in Faneuil Hall. Okay, you'll probably see me begging for twenty dollars when I'm out there. Um, so I hope you guys come to uh, to all of those to all of those things. Real quick, um, I did start watching Squid Games. I started. Wa I was like, I'm not going to watch this. Adults taking part in children's games and then getting killed if they don't. And then I watched the first two episodes, and I can't stop watching. There's just something about the brilliance of that is knowing that the people that don't do it are going to get killed, knowing that that intensity and what it does is it puts you there. It puts you in like, a, oh, my God, like if that was me, how would I handle this? And you're just in. I'm literally in there having anxiety attacks uh, watching this thing seeing these people fuck up and getting their brains blown out. And I'm just like, oh, my God. And all you think about is if it was you. If, if you, you, your life was on the line, like, how would you deal with that? How nuts is that? Um, yeah. So I'm into squid games. Uh, what else did I see? Did I see anything else? I'm trying to think. Um, haven't really been watching. That's the one thing when I end up watching a show, it ends up being at like one o'clock in the morning and I don't sleep. Right. So I'm glad that I just watched a couple last night and now I'm going to Texas because I'll be in my hotel. I'll be able to watch shit without staying up um, all hours of the night. I hope you guys come out to Texas. I hope you guys come out to Boston. Also want to thank you guys for all. Of oh, and here's the other thing. Here's the other thing that I wanted to address. Okay. Um, some people, cause I'm getting a ton of, I'm getting a ton of people coming onto my uh, YouTube and which I really appreciate. Appreciate you guys subscribing to it. I appreciate, um, you know, I appreciate everything, but, uh, it's funny how people like when I thank you guys. Okay. I thank you guys. And I say like the show is cause of you guys and you guys are the shit, this and that. Then people are like, Oh, why are you praising the people that you like? but then like you shit on the people that hate. And it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Of course, I'm going to praise my fans and the people that come to my shows and the people that listen to my podcast. Okay. Thing is, I don't have to like the, the haters. I don't know what has time. It's just sad. It's just sad. It's like, I, of course, I'm going to be like, yeah, you guys are the lowest and you fucking your burdens on your parents because your parents literally like, that's how I feel. Like, I think that like for imagine your life is so shitty that you go on to somebody that's successful and live in their dream and making money and you actually go on and take time of your life and effort from your life to write something negative about them. Imagine the burden on your parents knowing that they raised a fucking loser doing that. So when I say shit like that and people are like, oh, you don't care. 
you don't care about the fucking haters and you don't care about people, but you're going to go to the people that praise you. Yeah, you fucking dummies. Of course I'm gonna. Because the people that watch the show and listen, there's not a lot of hate. I'll be honest. There's not a lot of hate people for the most part. Listen, if you know me and you know what I do and oh, wait to the next special, you, you know, that's fine. But there's I'm just saying that like people actually gave me shit for saying that I don't give a fuck about haters or the people out there yet, but, oh, but you have time to praise your, your fans. Listen, guys, the fans are the reason that I'm selling tickets. The fans are the reason that my podcast is out here doing this. The fans are the reason that, you know, you guys come to a show and then you come up afterwards and go, Hey man, I love the podcast. I feel like I know you. Of course, I'm going to love that. I've said for years, come up to me. If you're a fan, Say what's up to me. I want to talk to you at shows. All right. What I'm talking about is, yeah, like I have, of course, I don't, I have my, my producer look at negative shit. I don't look at it. It's you're wasting your time. I don't see negative shit. I don't see anything negative. My producer will go, Hey man, this person was depressed and they really loved that. You talked about that. They really love that. You talked about depression and, uh, you know, and, and then I'll read something or somebody will say something really nice to me, you know, and I'll say, man, I'm glad I could help you because I have depression and anxiety. I'm fucked up too. I love those people. But if somebody's just going to say some stupid shit or just try to be like, nobody has time for that. I don't want to say what I really could say to those people. Cause I don't want anybody. I don't want anybody to be, I'm not even going to go there. I don't, I don't want, cause those people have problems. And we were talking about this yesterday. If, if somebody is going to go on and, and it's gone on at so many levels, right? It's gone on at, at, at people that are at an open mic level. And then you got all the way up to, you know, Chappelle and uh, people like Kevin Hart and, you know, people who are doing things uh, and following their dream and really successful and, and making money and, and creating stuff and doing all that stuff for somebody to, see something like that and go like, yeah, well, fuck, I don't think you're funny and, I, and, and doing all those things. Um, and they could think that, and that's their opinion. That's fine. But f- to take the time to do that, man, like your life has got to be really fucking like, and the, and people could come out and go, no, man, I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. I'm making money. I'm fuck. I got a family and stuff. It's like, nah, man, something's broken. You don't even see it. That's the sad thing. You don't even see it. You're projecting your mother or father sucked. And now you suck. And now you see people doing shit. Always know this, always know this. And this is the truth. You could get mad at it. You could say whatever, but this is the truth. When anybody comes to you negative uh, anybody comes at you in a, in a harsh tone and a bad way and starts talking about the shit you're doing, which is positive. Um, that person is projecting and they're just not happy or satisfied, man. There's something within them. That's just not there. And instead of getting mad, just got to feel bad. It's like those people, it's like watching a limping puppy. It's like watching a puppy limp. It's like, ah, fuck, poor guy. You know, yeah, anytime I ever, ever get like hate like that, I literally just go, ah, one of the greatest things was was Sarah Silverman. Some guy went at Sarah Silverman. I think I told a story before. Uh, And the only reason why I bring this up is because a couple people were like, well, you say that you don't care about what the people think, but you praise your fans, which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Of course, I'm going to praise my fans. Of course, I'm going to praise the people that the, 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 those those are the fucking people that understand me. Those are the people that come out to my shows. When I say I don't care about people, what people think, it's fucking those dummies. But Sarah Silverman said some guy was like, you know, you dumb cunt, you unfunny dumb cunt, and all this stuff. And she literally just goes, hey, man, I just looked at your profile picture. I see that you're not happy if you ever want to talk. And she just broke it down. And the dude actually went at her like, yeah, things are really rough right now. And I think they almost like became friends or whatever happened, but she totally flipped it. You know, that's what haters are, man. That's what haters do. It's hilarious. 
it's uh you know but it's it's really not worth your it's really not worth the time i give her credit for even doing that but it's not it's not worth the time but um yeah man some people are just fucking miserable miserable assholes and that's what it is but they have to live with that you don't so for all you positive people out there and for the most part everybody's positive i'm talking about like just you know a couple of people when you see something you're just like what you know i know some people that had hate on a really crazy level and it's just like it's just like ah yeah man those people are you know those people are those people suck can't even like it. it's 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 funny to, i've already talked about it too much right now because uh, i was just thinking of of somebody saying something that made no sense anyway houston boston Let's go the new hour. And guys, I cannot wait. I cannot wait for you to see the new hour. I've had multiple iconic comedians go, dude, I heard this thing is a monster. And people that I really respect and love and people in the industry on the other end of it, agents and people, some people that were there, there's a legendary director who said he's glad he was in the room to witness it. Uh, I'm thrilled. I can't wait for you to see it. Um, we watched it. I watched it and it's so hard to usually watch yourself. And I was like, wow, this is funny. So I'm excited for everybody to see it. I love you guys. Um, hope you guys are well. I hope you guys are good in between shows. I'll see you on 513. Um, that's it. Take care. Check out the um, Verzi Effect and Anything Better podcast, of course, and also go to my YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, check out clips and more stuff is coming, man. Love you guys.